In this recipe, we're going to look at how you can connect larger numbers of LEDs to a Raspberry Pi using a minimum number of the GPIO pins. And the technique for doing this is called Charlie Plexing. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using six LEDs and three resistors and we're going to be connecting to three of the GPIO pins of the Raspberry Pi and we're going to use that to um, turn any of these six LEDs on and off individually. There's actually a fair amount of wiring together to do to actually make all of this connect. So let's start off by putting the LEDs in. And the LEDs have a long lead and a short lead. And the long lead is the positive lead. So we start with the first LED and let's put it up on the top row on the right hand side of the uh, of the um, breadboard. So if you remember we've got the long lead to the top on that one and we'll put it right on the edge there. We're now going to put a resistor on the same two rows but swapped around so that we've actually got the positive lead at the bottom. So if you like the LEDs you can think of them as being sort of back to back in terms of their connections. And then we're going to do the same with the rest of the LEDs on two rows on a few rows beneath that. So start off with this row with the positive lead at the top and then it's reversed with a positive lead at the bottom on the same two rows there. Go a bit further down the breadboard and do the same thing again. So we have the positive like that. Let's go a bit further and then they're evenly spaced like that. And then this one like that. Let's move these out of the way for a moment. Okay, so that's the LEDs in the right place. We now need to put in the resistors. And we need one resistor that goes from the very top row of the right-hand side of the breadboard, bridges it across to the other half of the breadboard on the same row. We then need to do much the same thing for the row immediately underneath that, the second row of the breadboard. You have to be, it may make, make life a little easier if you actually trim the resistor leads off to make them a bit shorter. I haven't done that, but in, in hindsight it probably would be easier. Okay, let's push that in there. Um, the other thing to watch with these with LED with uh, resistor leads is they're often quite thin, so they make sure they have actually properly gone into the into the holes on the breadboard. Okay, so we've got the second one on the row below the first one like that. And then the third resistor goes right on the very bottom row that any LEDs are connected to, right down here. Okay, I'm going to bend these out a bit so that you can kind of see where they're connected, hopefully. Let's lay the LEDs out a bit as well. We need to make a few jumper wire connections. And the first one is we need male-to-male -male header lead going from the very top row, going to of the the top row of the second set of LEDs, like that. Okay, we then need another jumper that goes from there. So that's the bottom lead of the middle row of LEDs, and that goes to the very bottom row of uh, where any LEDs or anything is connected together. So there we go, like that. And then we need one more wire that takes us from the row two all the way down to the top row of, sorry, the, the, uh, the top row of the bottom row of LEDs. So well, that goes just like that. So you can see there's a sort of symmetry to all this. Um, when you've got it all plugged together, it'll, it'll look, look like it's meant. That's all the wiring on the breadboard. We now need to wire the breadboard up to the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is just going to be connected through the three resistors. So let's just plug three leads into the three rows that are connected to resistors like that. And we're going to use pins 18, 23, and 24 of the Raspberry Pi. 
It doesn't actually matter too much which way around you connect these leads. It'll mean different LEDs light up when you type in a different number when we run the test program, but you can kind of work out the pattern and just use a different number so that you light the LED that you want to. So let's put the top one to 18, the next one down to 23, and the very bottom one to 24. So you notice there's actually no ground connection here at all. The connections are just between the GPIO pins. And Charlie plexing is a very clever technique that actually turns um, particular pins from being inputs to outputs or setting them high and low. And by doing different combinations of this, it can actually turn on the different LEDs independently. OK, so that's all the wiring. Let's now switch over to the code. And you'll find a program ready to test out Charlie plexing called charlieplexing.py in the downloads for the book. Run, need to run it as super user, so let's put sudo in front of it. And let's run it. So we get the usual warning about the GPIO pins being in use. Um, if we have a look at the board now, we can see that all the LEDs are actually turned off. Right, so the software has prompted us to enter a pin that uh, really an LED would be a better word there, so that we want to turn on. So let's put in zero and press enter. And we can see now that the top left LED has lit. So let's try, might as well wake, make our way through the sequence. So let's try number one. Okay, and the second LED on the top row is lit. Let's just work our way through them all. So if we put in number two, there we go, we've actually jumped to the bottom row, so we could fix that by swapping over the, the, uh, the connections. Okay, let's try three. Let's try four. And then the very last LED, let's try five. Okay, so that's how you use Charlie Plexing to control a large number of LEDs using a Raspberry Pi.